Okay, Rachel's not here tonight for our Jeremiah study. So nights like this, I'll go off and we'll do another study. And I know she enjoys going through the Bible, so. Tonight I want to look at some doors in the Bible. In John chapter 10, and you won't be able to see it on Facebook, but the videos we're going to put up, you can see the scripture we're looking at. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus speaking, then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, that's important, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. That's the same I am that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I am the water of life. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection. The I am. That's the I am when Moses said, Oh, God, Israel's going to ask your name. What shall I tell them? I am that I am. And there were times that the Jews gathered stones. They were going to stone Jesus for his remark that he is God. In defiance of what the Jehovah Witnesses teach. He says in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. So there is salvation only through the door of Jesus Christ. It's not the door of the church. There is no invitation altar. Come forward. It's coming to the door of Jesus Christ, of the sheep, to be saved that you enter through. Salvation is of only Jesus Christ. And if you want to get to the door of heaven, it's not through Peter. That's a lie. It's through the door, through the Lord Jesus Christ. Our next place, Exodus. Second book of the Bible, Exodus chapter 12. In verse 7. The first door is Jesus Christ. On the Passover night, Exodus 12, 7, they shall take of the blood of the lamb and strike it on the two side posts and upon the upper door posts of the houses. Now we know when Jesus Christ died on Calvary, there was a thief to the right, there was the thief in the, to the left, and the one that died in the middle died for me at Calvary. That Passover lamb is the lamb of God which take away the sin of the world by the blood of Jesus Christ. He is the door. That blood is the blood of God. Acts 20:28. 20, You're not going to get through that door with water. You're not going to get to the door of heaven through membership. You're not going to get to the door into heaven by eating the blood of Jesus Christ. You're going to get to heaven through the door of Jesus Christ by the blood of the Lamb of God taken by faith that was shed by that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the Lamb of, Lamb of God. That's what takes away the sin of the world. That's what sets you free. That door is the door of Jesus Christ. It's by blood. This is the Passover. Genesis. One book to the left. Chapter 7. Verse 16. We'll start in verse 15. Genesis 7, 15 and 16. And they went into the they went in unto Noah into the ark. Two and two of all flesh. Wherein is the breath of life? This is Noah's ark, or the ark of Noah. It can't be found in Tennessee. It's on Mount Ararat. And they that went in, that would be eight people, and the animals. Noah, his wife, Ham, his wife, Japheth, his wife, and Shem, and his wife. Went in male and female, no other sexes, unless you're an ed educated idiot. All flesh, 
as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. That's the door. Noah didn't shut the door. Japheth didn't shut the door. Ham didn't shut the door. Shem didn't shut the door. No, no wives shut the door. No animals shut the door. God shut the door on Noah's ark. Or the ark of Noah. And when God shuts the door of death. I don't care if CPR, I don't care if the paddles, I don't care what what medical advancement has been made. When God shuts the door, the door is shut. The day that the rapture happens, or the night the rapture happens, at that moment when the rapture happens, the church age is done. It is finished. There is no more salvation by grace through faith. There is salvation by grace of faith, and works of the law. Now run up to chapter 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. Sorry, my mouth gets dry. Where is God? When he says, Come thou, into the ark. God is inside that ark. He says, Noah, you come in, come in. And then God shuts the door. In John chapter 10, God, Jesus Christ, who is God, says, Hey, listen, I'm that door. In Exodus chapter 12, says, By the blood of the Lamb, you get through the door of Jesus Christ. In Genesis chapter 7, God's inside. Says, come on, come, come. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white. God is offering an invitation. That invitation ain't a church altar. He said, I want you to come in before you close that door. Before I close the door. And that door today is through Jesus Christ. And that door is through the blood of Jesus Christ. One day, one day in the church age, God is going to shut that door. As he shut the door in Noah's time. And when God shuts that door, it's closed. No one's going to get in through grace alone. Once the rapture happens, you'll be in a time period called the tribulation period. You'll have to be saved by grace, through faith, and the works of the law. And staying to the end. What Matthew speaks about. So we have in John chapter 7. We have Jesus Christ is the door. Acts chapter 12. We have the door that is covered with the blood of the Lamb. Of God. Genesis 7. We have God shutting that door. With him inside saying come. Uh, many Christians wrongly quote. You know as the days of Noah. Shall so be the days of the church age. That's not. The church age doctrine. That passage goes to the tribulation. But let's see the days of Noah compared to Revelation chapter 3. Now we're looking at doors. Revelation 3, verse 20. We have another door. And this is the latter latter scene church age. This is the last church age. Before God says, close the door, I'm done. I'm closing the door, I'm done. I've left that door open enough for anybody who wants to come through that door, Jesus Christ, by the blood of the Lamb. Come in, because here I am in heaven, I'm inviting you to come, but I'm going to shut that door. But during the church age period, look at Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, this is Jesus Christ speaking, and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. What's the difference between oh, the days of Noah? We read in Genesis 7, 1, 
God says, come in. The last church age period, Jesus Christ says, I am standing at a door, knocking. And if you will answer that door, I will come in. But where is Jesus Christ then at the church? He's standing outside the door. God was in the ark. Jesus Christ, who is God in the land of the sea and church age, is standing outside the door. He says, I'm knocking, and if any man will open the door. Again, there's, there is no invitation. If you'll stand up and come walk the aisle to the altar, there's no altar. Not with Jesus Christ standing outside. There was no altar in the ark. We got to look at the position. We have come to a, such a decreased church age period that we are entertaining the world. We've had marriage into the world. Jesus Christ is standing outside the church door knocking. And the one that's inside the church is Satan. Amen in the preachers. You think that you may have the greatest church and you may have the greatest pastor. You may have the greatest Sunday school teacher. You may have the greatest great great of the great 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 great. But Jesus Christ may be standing outside your church door. And you know all eyes closed. I see that hand. Anybody want to come up to the altar? And Jesus Christ said, Anybody want to come out and get me? Hello, I'm knocking. Hello. Why don't you come open the door so I can fellowship with you? Hello. And then they go, Oh, as of the days of Noah. The days of Noah, that door was open and the invitation was come in. In the days of the last period of church age, the door is closed. We got to allow Jesus in. Jesus Christ is not even welcome in his own church. No, you know, all are welcome here. Why is Jesus staying outside the door? He is the door. The door is through the Lamb of God. God shuts the door. Listen, we're not even... The Philadelphia church age was the church of the open door. And there are many churches, you know, the open door Baptist church. That's wrong. That church age period is gone. We're the church of the closed door with Jesus Christ knocking on the door. Think about that. From Revelation chapter 3... Verse 14 to 22, that is our church period. We're rich, we're great, we're wonderful. And God says, thou art miserable, poor, wretched, blind, and naked. That's what God says about us. And my son is standing outside the door knocking. What a church period. Now one last place. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 4 through 6. So, we see that Jesus is the door, John chapter 10. We see it is the blood of the Lamb that's over the door, Exodus 12, that only by the Lamb of God through the blood are we saved. As we go through the door of Jesus to get to heaven, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, that there is no access to God the Father but by Jesus Christ. We see in Genesis chapter 7 that the door is open. Anybody could come in. But only eight souls went in. And that God is in that ark. He says, come in. Come on in. Come. And when God says, okay, that's it. The cup is full. The judgment is coming. The rain will start. He closes that door. 
And then when we went to the Laodicean church age period, that's rich and famous and great and wonderful, the door has been closed, so all are welcome. And Jesus Christ is at the church door that is closed, knocking, wanting anybody who will open that door and have fellowship with him. Though there are prayer altars, there is altar calls. And Jesus Christ is standing outside the door. In Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 4, the bride is speaking. My beloved put his hand by the hole of the door. My bowels were moved for him. I mean, it's that inside, you know, just get, you get all joy, you get the butterflies. Oh, here he is, here he is. Yeah. I rose up to open to my beloved. My hands dropped with myrrh, slightly, greatly. My fingers were sweet smelling myrrh. Upon the handles of the lock, that's the door, I opened to my beloved, but my beloved withdrew himself. I was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought for him, but could not find him. I called for him, but he gave no answer to me. We find Jesus knocking on Revelation chapter 3, the church door. We find the bride in Song of Songs that I hear him knocking. But, you know, we have to raise our hands. We have to entertain the world. We have to have the clown. We have to have the, the, the VBS. We have to have the balloon. We have to have, let's all greet our visitors. Here's our toys. Here's our, our packages. Here's our gifts. Here's our fellowship. Here's our entertainment. Here's our yay, hip hop, hooray. Here's our bowling night. Here's our fellowship dinner. Here's the, the, the who's got the bulletin with the $10. Who's got this? Who's got a special? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? We've got this meeting. Oh, this person brought 10 people to church. This person got eight people say, oh, this is a great person. Everybody clap your hands for this person. And by the time somebody says, hey, I hear Jesus knocking at the door, they go to the door and Jesus, uh, I'm done. I'm not putting up with that mess no more. I'm out of here. And the church spiritually dies. And there are many churches today that are spiritual. Hey, they may be, they may have hundreds, may they have thousands, they may have tens, they may have fives. But spiritually, they're dead because they closed the door on God. They put Jesus Christ outside. Jesus Christ was knocking on the door. And they, with their entertainment, and the world is welcome, and entertaining, and adulterizing with Satan, they got to the point that Jesus said, I'm not knocking no more. I'll move on. And that's the bridegroom in Song of Solomon speaking. It is Jesus Christ in Revelation chapter 3. That Jesus Christ is the door in Revelation chapter 3 and so on. They are saved people. But they've gone the way of the world. And as the sower went out and sowed the seed and the cares of the world and the riches were rich. Remember that? Revelation 3 has choked the word. They're saved. But they're going to do it the worldly way. They're going to do it the satanic way. They're going to do it the humanistic way. They're going to do it the emotional way. They're going to do it by feeling. Whoa, 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 feeling. And they're not going to do it by the Bible. They're not going to do it by God. They're not going to do it by the church. And the door is closed. And you can have many visitors. You can have many people say a prayer. 
But the reality fact is, and I've been in the churches, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, is not in that. And the excitement of the flesh and everything, that's exactly what it is. It's the flesh. And Paul tells us that the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit is at enmity, hatred, to the flesh. So Jesus closes the door on many churches because Jesus is not going to do it the fleshly carnal, carnal way. He won't get involved in that. And the very fact is many churches today are involved with Paul said in the Corinthian church that was carnal. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. And there's another Jesus. And I've been in churches, all eyes are closed, and I had an eye open. Yeah, I see that hand. I didn't see no hand. You liar. Yeah, we got a person, they got saved today, they want to give their life to Christ. Introduce so and so. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. It is their mouth to confess they receive Christ, not yours. The very first thing that person is going to do when they receive Christ, their mouth is going to speak. And so, well, I'm afraid to speak. Uh, I, I, I got to write by the scripture say, well, maybe you're not saved. With the heart, Romans chapter 10, Man believes unto righteousness with the mouth confessions made of it is you that's going to speak up and say, I receive Jesus Christ. I've been in church where they have campaign and they reward the people for bringing visitors. Bringing visitors is not them getting saved. Bringing them through the church door is not salvation. Because they came to the church doors and they sat in a pew does not mean they're saved. The church door is not the door that's Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the door. The Bible says that that Passover night was the lamb, the blood of the lamb, the blood of God, Acts 20, 28, the blood of Jesus Christ, who is the lamb. It is God that opens and shuts the door. And many churches, God has said, shut the door. I'm done. And Jesus is out there. Will you, will you let me in? Will you let me in? Look, look at Revelation chapter 3 again. Look at Revelation chapter 3. Look at Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door. That's the church door. And not, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. Genesis, Genesis 7, verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou in all thy house into the ark. What's the difference between the Ark of Noah and the Laodicean church age? God was in the Ark. Revelation 3. Revelation 3. Verse 20. God is outside the church building. He's not in the church. And the church is not a building, it's the assembly of the people. You got an assembly of people, of Christians, they're saved. Assembly of Christians gathered together, and Jesus said, I'm not with them. But if you want to come out and answer my call, I will come in unto you. I will sup with you. What about the rest? 
They'll hate you. They'll de-church you. They'll say things about you. They'll gossip about you. They'll lie about you. They won't want you in their church. They won't want you in their assembly. They don't want to hear the Bible. They don't want to hear the truth. I have witnessed that through my entire Christian life. I was in a church. They got upset with me. And he's like, should I throw you out or should you just quit? Over Revelation chapter 19, the blood that's upon the garments of Jesus when he comes back. The, the idiot said, and the Sunday school idiot said, well, it's the blood of Jesus. Scripture? No scripture. I gave him five, six, seven, and more scriptures too. That is the blood of the enemies. It's the blood of the enemies of Jesus, not the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus was shed on Calvary. Now, I don't know if I, sh I, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should just really ask you to leave, or maybe you should. Just All right, I'll tell you what I do. I'll just leave your church. And I guarantee Jesus Christ is not in that church. And other churches. And churches I don't even know about. He's standing outside the door. That's the scripture. That's the lie to see in church age today. He's wanting the few. Listen, now the entire world. I don't know how many there was. Only eight got in that ark. Out of the entire world, Jesus could only find 12 that were faithful to follow him, and one of them betrayed him. One of them cussed out, oh, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. Oh, come on, leave me the blank alone. I don't know who he is. Where was the other nine? And that, that one disciple that Jesus loved, John, was the only one there at the cross of Jesus. The doors of the Bible is that that door and the standard joke, you know, Peter standing at the pearly gate, that's a lie. The door is Jesus Christ by the blood of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that we are in a church age today, the church, yeah, it was open during the Philadelphia church age, but it is closed today. And Christians will go, oh, it was the days of Noah. Yeah, in the days of Noah, that, that, that door was open. It's closed. The church is closed. When God brought the judgment, he closed that door. Only eight got in. And the bride and song of Solomon, oh, I heard him knocking, I heard him, oh, I was so happy I heard him knocking. And I went, opened the door. He's like, I'm going, too late. You answered too late. And it's quite possible for a Christian, God be calling, God be calling, God be calling. And you know, I'm going to do it later. You know, just like a, a lost man, I'll do it later. I'll live my life, and, I'll, and once I get old and all that, then I'll turn around, then I'll serve God, then I'll do right. You may not grow old. Let me tell you something quite right and quite personal. In 1987, on April 15th, I was 18 years old when I got saved. An 18-year-old sinner, I got saved. On April 26, 1987, the next day, I went to church with my mouth. I confessed before the church, I received Jesus Christ. That afternoon after church, I went to my dad and I said, Dad, you're going to hell. I began to tell people about hell and about Jesus. The following Sunday, I was baptized, not for salvation. But hey, here's a public testimony. I received Christ. I'm going to go under the water. I'm going to die to self. I'm going to come out of, that, out of that water as a new person, as a new life for Jesus Christ. And I have, many times I failed the Lord. Many times I backslid the Lord. And there has been times that I served the Lord. 
I've been married twice, both my wives. I've been a widow. We served the Lord. We had multiple ministries throughout Connecticut and Florida. I've been a street preacher maybe 15 years. Countless tracts, countless witnesses, countless serving the Lord. I'm a doctor of theology. I went to school. I got my doctorate. I've had prison ministries. I've had Sunday schools. I've been involved six years with the farmer's market ministry. Now I've been serving the Lord and I've been trying to do right. I'm a sinner. On March of 2021, this year, I suffered three pneumonias and three different amputations on my foot. And a man that's living right, trying to live right, confesses his sin, and prays to God, that studies his Bible, and witnesses. My body has... I don't want to say taking a turn for the worst, but I am not who I was in February of this year. And I'm struggling to get back to some kind of healthiness to continue to serve the Lord. There were times in my ministry when I was younger, I could serve the Lord four, five, six hours in the Florida heat. Man, I struggle with three or four hours. I'm struggling now with my health issues. And you can't say, well, I'm going to wait till I get older. I'm going to wait till later on. Friend, God may have something in your life you won't be able to do it later on. You may not have the strength to do it, do it later on. The time is not later. The time is now. And he may not be knock, knocking on the people that's in your church. But if he's knocking on your heart, you got to take a stand and serve the Lord. But realize, when Paul wrote in the scriptures, Have I become your enemy because I spoke in the truth? He wrote that to Christians. One of the biggest offenses I get in the public ministry from day one. The most I gotten is from other Christians and churches. That's why the church door is shut. That's why Jesus is standing on the door. Because they don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to do right. They want the world to love. And the Bible says, marvel not if the world hates you. Well, they don't want to be hated. So if the Lord is knocking on your heart. Hey, hello. Answer now. Answer. Say, Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm going to open the door. I don't understand it. And that's all it takes. But Lord, I'm going to open that door. At least answer that door to the Lord. Say, Lord, I don't know yet, but I'm answering that door because you're not. Come in. Now, I don't mean the whole entire church is going to get on fire. And maybe the whole entire church will throw you out within time. Open that door before Jesus leaves. I'm not talking about the rapture. I'm talking about as far as you, all right, I've had enough. I'm not knocking no more. You're saved. You're saved. You're always saved. You're not going to lose you. You'll go with the rapture. You'll go to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. But if the Lord is knocking on your heart today, you're saved and you know it and God knows it. If he's knocking on your heart for something to do, You've already answered the door of salvation. Well, open the door to service. Open the door for fellowship. Open the door to sup with Jesus. But don't expect a crowd to be behind you. 